have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Keep me caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host. Understand 
between healthy and unhealthy uh, relationships. And with that being said, I am in March going to uh, various high schools, in the high school districts in the high school, and I am speaking before the General Assembly of all the, uh, the girls and the boys, talking about uh, healthy versus healthy relationships. And I think this is a very opportune time, and I'm going to share that more in, in tonight's segment. So I just wanted to share those uh, brief announcements with you. Uh, and I, why did I forget how to do that? Oh, I want to share these brief announcements. So I'm back here. So prom season is coming up. You didn't want to go, you win, or you wish you could go, or whatever. But prom season is coming up right around the corner. This is next tomorrow. Tomorrow is March. Oh, my God. Tomorrow is March. That is the start of prom season. So for many teens, it means picking out that perfect dress, uh, those shoes, thinking about how you're going to get your hair done and your nails and your makeup and your eyelashes and just really glamming it up for that night. Uh, and, you know, thinking about who you're going to go to, uh, this dance with or who's going to ask you if you're going to go with your, you know, your boyfriend or your friend or just someone that you are just going to go together. Or maybe it's a group of girls that, you know, rent the limo and they just go together and, and, and just, you know, hang out. Uh, but this special event can create a lifetime of memories. And I remember my prom. Uh, but some experiences, unfortunately, can also carry a lifetime of time. Uh, and we know a lot of things happen. You know, this is a season uh, where, you know, there's not a lot of chaperones. And of course, there's chaperones at the day. But we're talking about the before and the after activity. And uh, so this annual dance season uh, can be a reminder that some teens are in violent situations. Everybody is not in a in a uh, happy, healthy situation. And so teen dating violence, this is February 28th. Today is February 28th. Uh, not only is this my 24th wedding anniversary, happy anniversary, honey, and emotional abuse from the person they are dating. And I also want to include in that date rate as well because it happens to parents. It happens. Those constant text messages and voicemails, where are you? Who are you with? What are you doing? These are telling signs uh, to be leery of and to be take notice of when your date feels like you and he or he and she or he, she and she and he and he or whatever should never be disconnected. Everybody has a downtime. Everybody uh, has some time that they want to I feel like they want to have time to their self. So nobody wants to be around somebody 24-7 all day, every day. Everybody has some type of time when they just want to disconnect and pull the plug. So in 2011, President Barack Obama declared February as National Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Statistics show one in three teens have experienced dating violence. This justifies the need to have an awareness. So, again, as I stated in the intro, uh, when I was talking about the uh, announcement, through general assembly sessions with uh, high school districts to present this data for prevention and awareness measures, because if you don't know, the numbers are steadily increasing. The numbers are rising. It looks nice when you see these beautiful prom pictures and, and all these expensive dresses that they're paying for and how they're, you know, dressing and looking nice and beautiful and stuff, you know. So it's, 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 it's happening. Teen dating violence, just like any other violence, can have long-term effects. You know, teens suffering from dating abuse often end up being alcoholism, eating disorders, suicidal thoughts, violent thoughts, and so on and so on, so forth and so on. Different things can cause them to have long term, even after the relationship is over, the person has gone on, you gone on, they went off to college, you went off to college, or whatever you decide to do after high school, those effects of what happened during that time can still be lasting and lingering and long term. 
And so we have to be careful with that. It widely affects our youth. Again, as I said, in the U.S., it says one in three. That's 33%. So if you got three people that you're in a room with, statistics shows one of you have been in a dating violence, violence relationship. It says in the U.S., 33% of male and female adolescents are victims of sexual, physical, or emotional dating abuse. Also, with this come STD scares. STD, for those who may not know, and I'm pretty sure you do, sexually transmitted disease scares. Statistics show teen girls subject to abuse are six times more likely to become pregnant or contract an STD or an STI, which is a sexually transmitted infection, more likely uh, to become pregnant because they're in this relationship. And, you know, sometimes, most times we confuse love with that. And so we've got to talk about those. These are things that comes out of this teen dating violence. And why I'm bringing this up, because, again, as I say, prime season is coming around the corner. We can dress all this up. We can put on those nice, beautiful wedding gowns. Some of them are wedding gowns. We can put on those beautiful dresses. But we have to deal with stuff that's going on the inside. Out of that suicidal scare, this is shocking to me now. I did not know this. They say when you're dealing with teen abuse, a shocking 50% of young adults who experience physical or sexual abuse, including rape, suicide. Now, you know, that is something we have to deal with. 50%. That is a big number. That means 50%. Out of 10, 5. Out of 20, 10. That's just staggering. I was just shocked. They can't handle, teens can't handle that kind of stuff. Adults can't handle that kind of stuff when you're going through that type of a scenario. And so we need to, you know, this is something I just, I'm just wanting to talk about. I try to keep up with what's going on. Of course, I'm in the movement. And, of course, love it. I am monitoring. I'm watching it. But I've always liked to put it with the time. What's going on now? What's current now? You know, we can always keep talking about, you know, what physical abuse is or sexual. We already know the, the definitions of it. We already know. But we want to apply it into daily life. And what's the daily life? What's coming up? Prom. You're going to see a lot of pictures on social media, a lot of pictures on social media with crime and all this stuff. So let's talk about that because it's happening. Teens often confuse emotional abuse and jealousy with love. It's not love, sweetheart. That's not love. Emotional abuse telling you, don't nobody want you but me. You might as well stay with me. You know, uh, I'm the only one that loves you. If you can't do nothing, I can do it. That's emotional abuse. That's tearing down your self-esteem. That's tearing down your your character. That's tearing about down uh, uh, your your stamina, your determination about who you are. And jealousy, we know, oh, well, if I can't have you, look, let me tell you something. If I can't have you, nobody can have you. If somebody say that to you, you better hightail it out of there. Jealousy, it's not cute. Oh, he's just jealous because he want to be. No, sweetie, it's deeper than that. That's a red flag. It's all about power and control. And when somebody is jealous of somebody speaking to you or you speak to somebody or they're jealous because they looked at you or you just said hi or you asked them something and all of a sudden they got these jealous tendencies, that is all about power and control because they want to be in control. And they want to have the power, and they want to usurp the power over you. And that's where that jealousy stems from, possessiveness. Nobody owns anybody. So to stop the warning signs, here are some red flags. Change of behavior. You know, you you see your friends or you see your your daughter or your son, they're getting with, uh, they're getting with, this new person and, you know, they're going to the dance or prom and all, all of a sudden their behavior change are kind of distant or, you know, secretive or, you know, they weren't secretive before. They were always 
let, you know, telling you things and talking to you and sharing with you, and all of a sudden they're they're resolved, they're they're distant and they're reserved and and you know snapping at you. You ask one question and they you know change hey, those are red something is going on. Distance. I talked about the isolation. Oh, with so and so, he said he didn't want me to go so and so, or she said she didn't want me to go. She wants she want me to stay with them. No, those are red flags. Nobody should be isolated because when you get somebody isolated, when you get somebody off away from their family and their friends, most times it's to do your bidding, whatever it is, because they got to get you away from the your support system. And the way they do that is to isolate you. And kids are doing it now, even in high school and grade school. You know, I see, I've seen it. Lying. All of those, all of a sudden, you know, you're lying where you're going. You're lying, you know, just out of character. Changes in your character. Those are some of the red flags. And then, you know, sometimes they say, the statistics show that, and it says only a third, one in three, 33 percent of teens in an abusive relationship feels like, feels like they could confide, they couldn't confide in someone about the abuse and they hesitated to seek help because they didn't want to expose themselves. Listen, sweetheart, let me tell you something. It ain't got nothing about being exposing yourself. Open up and tell somebody because abusers, they thrive in darkness and secrecy. And most times, you teens, if you've been around grown folks, most times people see it anyway, or they suspect something. And your, teen, your friends are to expose yourself. No, you speak up and tell because the longer you hide that thing and you stay behind closed doors and you keep them hidden, they're going to keep doing what they're doing, and it's not going to help you. And then guess what? If you decide to walk away from it and they have that same characteristics and those behaviors, they become narcissists, then they're going to turn around and do it to the next person. And so you want to speak up and speak out because abusers don't want to be told they don't want to be found out. They always want to hide behind some type of charisma, like, you know, they're all of that in a bag of chips, that they're just so wonderful and nice and so, they're just so vulnerable. They're just, but they're Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and they know that, and they know you know that. And so they want you to remain in obscurity so they can continue to do what, they are doing. And so and most times, they are behaving in such a way that when you try to tell somebody, because if you're saying it long enough, and then you try to tell somebody, then people are like, well, wait a minute. He was doing this, and he was doing that. And, and, and they, they, you know, don't hide. Don't hide. Don't don't keep them in dark. Shine the light on it. Shine the light on them and what they're doing. Don't hide in it. And for teens, you know, you have some teens, maybe they're already uh, introverts and they're already quiet and, and reserved and, and that's just their character, that's just their nature, you know. That's nothing different about that with them, but you may feel something. You may feel like something is amiss or awry or something. Well, you know what? If they won't talk, look at some of the text messages. Look at some of their photos on social media, on their social media accounts. Those give big clues. You know, you know they say a picture is, is worth a thousand words. You know, you can look at some people, and you can look at pictures and like, mm, they don't look right. Or you can see some behavior, or you can see some body language or facial expressions, or you can, you know, come on. If you've been around long, like, as long as I have and you're an adult, sometimes you can pick up on stuff by looking at pictures. They say that, and I'll say it again. A picture is worth a thousand words. So, you know, they don't want to talk. Look at some of those messages. Look at, just kind of observe how they communicate on the phone or how they communicate with their kids, their friends, or look at how they, you know, respond when they come into to the car from school or some kind of social gathering or social media accounts. You know, those are big clues. If they don't talk, if they don't want to talk, and that's their character that they've always been quiet and reserved and, and introverts. 
then that's another way you can kind of look, especially if you are getting an uneasy feeling. And let me tell you, parents, if you get that uneasy feeling, you follow that thing. Say, oh, you know, that's just me. No. It's putting a check in you for a reason. Putting a check. And we all know our kids. We know our kids. For real. Because we know when people come and say something about our kids, we know, mm-mm, no, that ain't so and so. Oh, yeah, you run her mouth. Yeah, that's her. You know your, you know your child. So you, we know when something is is a myth and a, that's not that's not setting well with us. And don't 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 just sweep it under the rug and say, oh well, no, we don't want to do that. So during prom season, you know, driving and drinking and smoking and and and, and doing all of those things, you know, sex and. All these things and just doing stuff, hookah bars and all. We talk about that, and which is certainly important. Unfortunately, instances of dating violence and bullying are even more likely to occur as high school seniors celebrate and end uh, celebrate the end of their high school years. You know, uh, that could happen again. Like I said, prom time. You know, everybody is putting their best foot forward. They look at nice and stuff. And something may pop off while you're away. First of all, you're away from mom and daddy. Then once you get out of the eyesight room at the uh, place where the event is being held, you know, you're right there with that person. And so these things are happening. They are happening often. Uh, I don't want to see them. I don't want to hear about them. But we are hearing about them. And we're going to, but so there's some things we can do, not only just as parents, but as adults, as friends, as family members. We can share and talk to them. So parents and, and, and adults and stuff, don't be afraid to ask your team about what's happening with their relationship. You just tell me, or, and I you know, listen to it. Some of them may be alarming, but I will I don't give those facial expressions. I'll just kind of remain cool, calm, and collective and listen to it. But on the inside, I'm like, maybe, uh-uh, I'm going to, no, this ain't going to work here. But because you want to keep that line of communication open, and, you know, they looking at you, and they're going to see how you respond. And if they do talk, that is a good thing. Because I'm telling teenagers, them years between, like, 13 and 27, 28 or something, they have lost their mind. And for one, they don't even think you know what you're talking about. And so when you get that that one child that will open up and stuff, keep that relationship open. Keep it open and just be open-minded. But you always have some type of solution. Uh, how are you going to tackle this thing? So getting that conversation going so you can educate your child about the difference between a healthy and unhealthy relationship is vital. And it will help them alleviate unnecessary trauma, junk that we went through. If we know what, a lot of stuff we went through, we, we shouldn't want our kids to go through. You know, we went through them because of either out of ignorance, uh, because we was just hard-headed or fast or whatever, we want to do our own thing or whatever, or, you know, or sometimes it's just no fault of our own. But whatever it is, we want to make sure that our kids don't have to deal with the drama and the, and the, uh, the trauma of what we've had to deal with. And we know, uh, you know, how painful that was to live through that. And so they need to be encouraged to talk openly about respect. Oh, my God. That is because I don't care what the person is doing. If they just, if they consent to do something, if that's what they do, they consent to do, that's what they consent to do. But if they decide to change their mind and say no, they don't consent, then that, that is a wrap. Then you don't continue to push, then that becomes rape. Because once the person says no, and you go past that no, that's an issue right there. And boundaries. We have to teach our kids about having boundaries for not only yourself, but you have boundaries where you don't let people cross. You don't let people cross certain boundaries in your area. And so the earlier they are exposed to what healthy relationships look like, the better it is for them relationship among our adults. And so I just wanted to bring that awareness today uh, because, again, one, this is the end of February, the last day of the month for February, which is also the last day of the Awareness Month, Teen Dating Awareness Month, and the awareness colors is, is orange. So when you see orange, think about
team, and uh, also prom is coming up. Prom is not coming up. Prom is here. People are already looking for dresses and doing stuff, and prom is up. So I just wanted to bring this awareness out to keep before uh, our viewers about how, you know, we know this was a joyous occasion. Everybody is happy and excited and stuff, but there's a dark side that's always lurking, and we want to make sure that our teams are healthy and understand uh, the difference between a healthy versus an unhealthy relationship. So if you or someone you know needs help, reach out and get help. You can reach us at our website at jadasa, J-A-D-A-S-A dot org, our, web, our social media website under Jadasa under Facebook, or our, uh, our Instagram, and then you can go to our uh, YouTube page, Jadasa Live, or you can call us at 1-800-292-2145. That is our 800 number, 1-800-292-2145. And our office number is 314-269-0100, 314-0100. You can find resources and support services also if you are on the social media. So, you know, of course, it goes, it's not stuck in St. Louis or Missouri or the United States. Uh, is global. You can find resources and support and services, uh, services, support services in more than 205 countries at the No More, the no More Global Directory. More than 205 countries at the No More Global Directory, and that is at nomoredirectory.org. Nomoredirectory.org. So now I want to leave you with this, Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of people, to give you an expected end. And I want you to know that God is thinking good thoughts of us. He's always thinking peaceful thoughts. And he wants us to give us the end that he expects us to have and the end that you expect to have. You want to end up peace and love and joy. That's what God expects to have. And that's what I want you to have, too. And so remember, JASA is a community-based organization, and you are uh, the community. You are our global community, our local community, and our international and national community. Therefore, you are JASA. Remember, it is JASA 24-7, 365 days. With that being said, I want you to be safe, I want you to be well, and I want you to be whole. Good night.